I'm changing my oil on my John Deere 4430. I just got done doing the fuel filters and let it run to get at the temp. First thing I do is put a bucket under it and pull out the drain plug. Be careful not to make too much of a mess. You can see here I'm just using a crescent wrench and kind of trying to do it with one hand and hold the camera with the other hand. And you can see I didn't make too much of a mess. And just kind of let that all dry out. You want to check the oil for uh, like a metallic or copper bronze color in it. If you see any of that, that's probably a bad sign. You also need to pull the plug on the oil filter. I had to use pliers because it was all stripped out. This is me uh, making a note to self to replace that thing, buy a new plug for it. They also make a tube that you could put on to drain it so it doesn't get all over the frame there. It's kind of just another mess you got to clean up. I just use some huge uh, channel locks to get that filter off. Once you started spinning, it was fairly easy. And I just spin it off by hand. I set the camera down. I got the oil drain, I put the plug back on and just kind of inspected it and made sure everything's okay and I looked in the oil to make sure there was no floaties. You can see some air bubbles in there, but that's nothing to be concerned about. And here I'm cleaning off the filter housing and you want to lube up that o-ring before you put it on. And you want to make sure that's all lubed up real good and clean. So I just dipped my finger in that oil and put it on the o-ring itself and also pre-fill the filter with oil so it doesn't have such dry startup and then I take my finger and rub it on the outside of the filter just just everywhere that o-ring is going to touch I want to be looped up so it doesn't stick and makes it easy to get off next time some people don't do that but I think it's a very important step just cleaning up some more right there you don't want to feel your filter too full when you screw it on all the oil will come out I see it's got it on. It says to oil the and loop up that o ring, get it tight, and then do a half turn by hand. I didn't use any tools. Now I'm using my scribe to write on the hours so that I could tell how many hours I changed that filter on. Just like I did with my fuel filters there. That's where you check the oil level. This is where you add the oil. So I went ahead and oil and added the oil. I added four and a half gallons, and then I double checked the manual, and it said it only needed four gallons. So here what I'm doing is I'm actually draining out half a gallon using the measurements on that uh, oil container there. I got that all done and it sealed back up and here I am starting it up so I can check for leaks. Make sure the throttle's positioned all the way down. Yeah, it's starting up, it's building pressure there. And there it goes. Now I'm outside checking for leaks while the engine's running. I check around the filter, around the plug, the, the plug on the bottom. Just make sure nothing's leaking out anywhere. Just kind of inspect everything that I've just done. I don't think my vice is too small, but I was able to put it like this. Have the jaw oil and put pressure down and then get this thing turned. So I'm pulling off the first time. It doesn't look too bad. It actually looks fairly clean. Let's see if I can flip on a light. Got a light on. It looks good. It's good news. This is just the Jex brand oil filter cutter. It works pretty good if you can hold the base in something. I gotta clean up everything, get that oil on some containers to take to recycling, and then I can check the oil level.